the TV burp, the show which picks the wheat from the TV chaff and demonstrates its ears. And this week, <laughs> Princess Anne dropped into BBC's Animal Hospital. <laughs> there we are, Dottie. You, you got a bit of a niche there. <laughs> Well, ma'am, she seems perfectly all right to me. <laughs> and you can catch a frank interview with Dottie the Bull Terrier on tomorrow's Tonight with Trevor McDonald. <laughs> she wasn't destroyed under the Dangerous Dogs Act, no. The Queen came through for me. <laughs> Queen came through for her. And ITV1's Mr. Wright is down to the last two girls. <laughs> and on Fat Club, Fit Club, sorry, Rick Waller has finally burst. Totally stressed out. And as Big Brother races towards its climax, we bring you our TV Big Brother Highlight of the Week. TV Big Brother Highlight. We're living in a golden age of telly, ladies and gentlemen. We really are. <laughs> Big brother of a live 24-hour feed. And we at TV Burp have one too. Yeah, here's a little from the TV Burp live TV feed from earlier today. <laughs> Yeah, it's me watching the Big Brother live feed, basically, yeah. I tell you what, I spent most of the day trying to get my money back on my old Anne Diamond fitness video. <laughs> well, they weren't having any of it down at Woolies. Ah, big Brother, though, eh? Hmm? Goldie out first. Can you imagine his wife and family getting that news? Oh, what, what, already? <laughs> what were we supposed to do with him? <laughs> Can you have him for a bit longer? First out and back to the arms of his wife, Sonia. Oh, which reminds me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Sonia. Yeah, it's Harry. Yeah, it's probably best I don't come over anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now he's out. Yeah. What? Five times? <laughs> well, I haven't got any saddle on. <laughs> Is it me or has Rolf Harris been leaning on his paintings again? Now, I've heard some pretty amazing claims in my time, but listen to this one from the bill. Do you remember, Pete? Anglesey, wasn't it? Would you let the man go, Mum? Sorry about her. Talk the hind leg off a donkey. <laughs> she can talk the hind leg off a donkey. But can she? Well, we put her to the test tonight. Are you there, Mrs Haynes? Yes. Confident? Fairly, Harry. All right, off you go. I saw that Mrs Kenworthy from number 23 yesterday. She doesn't look at all well. I said to her son, is there something wrong with your mother? She doesn't look well. Well, when I Any movement she on those well, legs? I mean, no, sort of nothing so far. Uh, it's not looking good, I'll be honest. Uh, but we'll see how she's getting on a little bit later. <laughs> To get you know, one of the programmes I love is Life Laundry, the show where people chuck out a whole load of stuff and sell it at car boot sales. I watch it on the portable in the bedroom. Well, I can't get in the lounge for all the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> is Dawn of Water and the gang in action? Oh, my God. Mm. I'm being really sweet this morning and I'm going to uh, yeah? let you keep <laughs> one of them, Justin. Yeah. Whoa! Oh! Ah! Don't listen to those squeals! <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye, Womble. Throwing away a Womble. Oh, for a Womble mixed up with all that litter, that's torture. <laughs> <laughs> now, the big news on ITV1 this week is Dr Zhivago. <laughs> Yay! It's back and it's raunchy. It's a, all right, all right, that's enough, that's enough. It's a, it's a remake, basically. We've got another one now. Yep, that takes us up to two Dr. Zhivago's. Uh, that's uh, seven Great Expectations and uh, 12 Scrooges. And, uh, oh yeah, just the one Fame Academy. <laughs> Here's the opening sequence. The young Dr. Zhivago gets some bad news. What sort of man leaves his only child alone and destitute?
My papa's a good man. And we've got all of him. Please welcome the young Dr. Shivago. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Shivago, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> Tell me, Dr. Shivago, did you enjoy uh, making Dr. Shivago, Dr. Shivago? I certainly did, Eddie. <laughs> now, you're a poet, of course, and I? Yes, you are. <laughs> Take a look at this. Shivago. What's this? Poetry? Your own? Yes, sir. Not only do you want to be a doctor, you want to be a voice of the people as well. No, sir. I just want my own voice. I just want my own voice. <laughs> Are you going to do one of your poems for us now, Dr. Javon? I don't want to do one of my poems. I'll go and do one of your poems. I don't want to do one of my poems. I don't want to do one of my poems. All right, I'll do one. I'll do one. All right, what's the first one you're going to do? We've got the book here, you see? We've got the poetry book. Uh, what's the first one? Uh, winter in Moscow. It's winter in Moscow. OK, off you go. Uh, winter in Moscow. <laughs> Oh, God, it's cold. It's a short one. <laughs> it's a short one, that one. Um, what's the next one? Uh, this one's called the firing squad. It's the firing squad. Yes, it's been, it's been inspired by the execution of the Tsar and his royal family. OK, it's been inspired by the execution of the Tsar and the Russian royal family. OK, off you go. The firing squad. Bang, 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 bang. Anyone get Anastasia? Not sure. Oh. There we go. That's enough. That's all he does. Dr. Shibago there. Ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Ah. Coronation Street now. Isn't it weird how people end up looking like they're light switches, though, eh? <laughs> This week, on the bill, Des Tavener and Gemma Osborne went undercover to infiltrate a badger-baiting ring. <laughs> now, Celebrity Fat Club. Sorry, Fit Club! <laughs> now, Anne Widdicombe's a game old bird, isn't she? She's up for anything. This is what your guys seriously thought I was going to offer. The idea that I would obsessively each day Write down the amount of exercise I do is ludicrous. I am not convinced you need the right compass reading way. skills in order to lose well, weight. You wanted Rude. to know about our problems with food. Well, I could have summed it up for everybody. We eat too much, you know, full stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit, Anne. Yeah. Mind you, she was prepared to have a go at tennis. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Anne. Blimey. Stop it, Anne, will you? Oh, we've got a right one here, we really have. What about you look blind date, though? The idea is to spice things up a bit, make it a bit more... Dr. Shivago. Ooh. Ooh. Here's a clip from last Saturday's show. <laughs> yeah, see, if you get Dale Winton I was having a dinner in a Chinese restaurant. Amazing how similar they all and are. And Cliff Richard, and combine them, you get ITV One's Mr. Wright. Oh, <laughs> baby. Lance Gerard Wright, who had to choose from this bevy of beauties. They come from all over the country, from Cardiff to Clacton on Sea. They have a broad range of looks and personalities. The youngest is 24. The oldest, 37. Yeah, good luck with that, mate. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're fun. I'm sorry. Call me another girl's name. <laughs> <laughs> Intelligent. I had this idea that clay pigeon shooting was um, shooting clay at real pigeons. <laughs> We're classy. We frightened. Shat my pants. The girl I felt sorry for was poor old Heidi from show one. When she first met Lance, she seemed to make a really strong impression. I'm called Heidi. You want me to tell you why? Mother and father shagged in Hyde Park. <laughs> You're sending a profile. Just like Brooklyn Beckham. The couple of things that I'm a scouse, blonde, retro, has been... <laughs> she from the rough part of Liverpool and on the dole, he a job in the guards and an equerry to royalty, 
they seem made for each other. Without a doubt, one of the strongest characters of the evening was Heidi. Sounds promising. But I did feel that perhaps you'd misjudge me. Um, OK. But I'm, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to say goodbye to you. OK, Lance, okay. that's no problem. Thanks, Heidi. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Boot it out on show one. <laughs> He's got three girls left and they're all in a flat in London. It's a nice flat. But to me, it's just a little bit busy. You know what I mean? So that's why I took a special friend to visit them. You are kidding. He was all over me for the night. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone can see that we're made for each other. Uh, hello, girls. Oh, oh hi. Hi, hi, Harry. Everything all right? Yeah, no, best, best of friends. Really like uh, uh, Katie, could you call the dog off? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, now, girls, this flat of yours, right, it's a little bit busy, isn't it? Mm, a little bit too much stuff. That's why I've got a friend of mine to come and help you sort it out. Hi, girls. <laughs> Did you ever wonder why you had too much stuff? <laughs> you need to show me around. So, how many bride magazines do you need? This is what I mean. No, 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 you can't throw these out. I really need them. Look at this. You've been putting your picture in next to Lance's. Wedding day, brides. You've got a problem, Jeannie. How many white dresses does a girl need? I need these. I do. I really do. Three. By the time you get married, honey, these are going to be out of fashion. No, you don't understand. Just this give life won't be I need them. No, 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 please. Come on. Let the dress go. <laughs> these don't leave very much room for love in your life. What's those? Dolls. Uh, They're not very He will be mine, Donna. He will be mine. Katie, you really need to learn to let things go. Okay, just just take take it. Take it. Take it away. <laughs> it's me. What's that noise? Why? Oh, that's Heidi. She's cool. she didn't take it too well. It's Heidi Lance. I'm back and I'm sober and I want another chance, you pompous bastard. Please. Oh, you see? That's much better, isn't it? <laughs> Hello, girls. Hi. Hi. Listen, Hi. I have got front row seats for Limmers. How are you doing? How are you doing? Very well. Listen, do you like musicals? Like them? I love them. Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Could you change my seats to the back row? I've got a filly in tow. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Why doesn't he just get off with Ulrika like everybody else? <laughs> Why can't he do what all the other toffs do and marry a cousin, hmm? <laughs> well, Great Britain's at the weekend and Charles Darwin scraped in at number four, despite a last-minute rally from his supporters. <laughs> <laughs> See, my money was on Nelson. But who is better, Nelson or Churchill? I think there's only one real way to work it out. Fight! <laughs> He's only got one arm. We'll see you in a moment. Welcome back. News just in. Angus Dayton's agent reveals the career plan for next year. <laughs> Quincy's back. <laughs> oh, those Germans, though, eh? Sometimes I wish I hadn't bothered to forgive them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I have been enjoying BBC Two's The Entertainers, though. A chance to reacquaint ourselves with some of my boyhood favourites. I, I don't think that's the right door, Tony. No, I did, if the... No, if, if the key won't... If the key won't fit in, <laughs> it's very un... Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I got the wrong room. Yeah, you got the, got the wrong room. <laughs> yeah, you got the wrong room, Tony. All right. <laughs> Which brings us to our TV highlight of the week. TV highlight of the week. Bernie Clinton.
Clifton. Boom. Right, Brenda, it's your turn now, love. Ah, uh, Bernie. You always. Hey, Bernie! Bernie! <laughs> Wonderful! I must say, Bernie, I am enjoying you on the entertainers. <laughs> what are you up to at the moment? I'm doing Dick Whittington at the Lyceum Theatre in Crewe. Uh, Dick Whittington at <laughs> the Lyceum. See to all prices. Lovely. Now, now, Bernie, the thing is, I, I love the ostrich. You know, it's sort of your trademark, isn't it? It's my trademark, and the thing is, I'm getting fed up with being associated with the ostrich, because everywhere I go, people say, Bernie, where's the ostrich? Yeah, well, you know why that is, Bernie. Wait, 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 wait. Well, every time we see you... You're on the ostrich, aren't you? <laughs> of course! <laughs> then what you want to do is go away and see if you can come up with another idea. What, another idea than the ostrich? Yeah, another idea than the ostrich. <laughs> Harry, I'll go away and think about it. You do that. You <laughs> get them there, off he goes. What? <laughs> ah, Dr Shivago, though, eh? It's back and it's raunchy. <laughs> I must warn you that the following footage has strong accents and people with beards from the outset. <laughs> A very young ZZ Top there. <laughs> Someone got some new gloves. <laughs> Let's have another clip. Isn't it weird how people end up looking like they're mirrors, though, eh? <laughs> But this Dr. Shivaga is quite an achievement, right? Particularly if you consider that it was made during the great beard shortage of 2001. <laughs> the great beard famine. Twelve productions of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs had to be cancelled. <laughs> and Father Christmas at Harrods was sacked when he turned up for work with a five o'clock shadow that he'd been furiously backcombing. <laughs> As you know, most of our theatrical beards are imported from the Far East, from the big beard and moustache farms. <laughs> <laughs> But because of a dispute over pay and conditioner, an embargo... <laughs> let me finish. An embargo was enforced, and we've had to try to match the shortfall with our own British beards. Of course, they're far superior, uh, but they do take just that bit longer to grow. Well, a call went up for donors, and many of our top celebrities stepped forward. Richard Branson, <laughs> David Bellamy, <laughs> Brian Blessing, <laughs> Jeremy Spade, <laughs> and even Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> Step forward. <laughs> Sorry, Anne. <laughs> so, they've had to get surrogate beards. Yes, men who, for a fee, will grow a beard for another man's chin. Here's Chris, who is growing a beard for a stranger. When I heard the idea, I thought, fine, yes, they pay me £300, all I have to do is grow a beard. <laughs> but when it came to handing it over, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I didn't realise how attached I'd become to it. <laughs> so I've been helping out. Yeah, I've been breeding them, basically. Yeah, I've got two beards in this cardboard box here and uh, I'm trying to get them to mate. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, news this week that Dean Gaffney, self-styled road sweeper Robbie, is leaving the square. So, Dean, if you've got a pen, the number for the bill is... <laughs> 020 -6002. Give him a ring, I'm sure they'll sort you out. And, of course, Tony Caunter, who plays Roy Evans, is leaving the square too. Yeah, so, Tony... The number for the last of the summer wine is <laughs> 0207 950. We get the idea with that. <laughs> now, the BBC won't let us get clips of EastEnders. <laughs> yeah, that's who you've got to write to, Greg Dyke. <laughs> you know, they've sold the EastEnders format to Iraq. Hello, 
ਸਾਨਾ ਤੇਰੇ ਵਾਸ ਕੇ ਟੈਕਸੀ ਆ ਗਈ ਉਹ ਪਾਕ ਤੂੰ ਬੈਲੀ ਨੂੰ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਲੈ ਆ ਅੱਛਾ ਰੋਈ ਉਹ ਫਿਰ ਪਾਗਲ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਨੋ ਯੂ ਕਾਂਟ ਹੈਵ ਐਨੀ ਕਲਿਪਸ ਆਫ ਈਸਟੈਂਡਰਸ ਟੀਵੀ ਇਜ਼ ਇਵੋਲਵਿੰਗ ਯਾ it's evolving it's sort of getting flatter and, and wider isn't it <laughs> well just time for a round up of i've done it harry look i've talked them off of it <laughs> so you better go and have a go at the horse <laughs> well we've just heard that pierce brosnan is stepping down from playing james bond so we can explore a broader range of parts yeah now pierce the number for the bill is <laughs> 0207 <laughs> now what the who's that I can't believe it. No, no, Tony, it's 305 you want. It's, oh, no. I'm terribly sorry. I've got a wrong number there. Yeah. Yeah. This is strange. What? Tony, open the door. I've got what? the new idea. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, it's a new idea, look. <laughs> yes, an ostrich riding on the back of a man. It's brilliant. <laughs> Uh, fancy a drink? Not off. Come on, chitty face. 